wilderness. Throughout history, it's been regarded simultaneously as an unruly beast to be feared, a resource to be exploited, and a treasure to be cherished. It seems it was our own concept of the wild that needed taming. The Wilderness Act was our nation's attempt to do so. With a growing population, expanding development, and increasing mechanization, we saw vast expanses of land as fuel for that growth. The impulse to preserve places in perpetuity or to develop them is a tension that exists to this day. With the Wilderness Act, we began to delineate not only land for use, but also land for its intrinsic worth, its value to nature, and just as importantly, to our own human nature. There was very little uh, actual advocacy in, in the late 40s, into the early 50s, for the protection of wilderness areas for their, for their own value. And it really was the leadership of a few individuals who created this idea. Drafted in 1956 by Howard Zahnizer of the Wilderness Society and signed into law in 1964 by President Lyndon Johnson, the long road to the bill's passage was supported by many key players. They included Sierra Club Executive Director David Brower, Wilderness Society compatriots Olas and Marty Murray, Bob Marshall, Harvey Broom, and Secretary of the Interior Stuart Udall. All were unified by the belief that wilderness and the American landscape were central to our identity. My dad, Stuart Udall, used to say the wild, unspoiled land is important in a sense of being a part of the American soul. Our great explorers, John Wesley Powell, Meriwether Lewis, Davy Crockett went out uh, and came back with stories about the wildness of the land. It was just part of the American imagination. American artists played a really important role in developing that wilderness aesthetic. And the landscape was our raw material. And so the artists went out into nature and brought back these beautiful vistas, places that a lot of settlers didn't even know existed. Wilderness holds the soul, the spirit of the American tradition. To be brave, to be wild, to be free. If we actually say America is home of the free, then wilderness is part of that freedom might be in the lakes of Wisconsin, or might be off the Keys in Florida, might be in the rainforests in the state of Washington. Whatever it is, it's something that binds us together. No matter where you are, you are connected to the balance of the natural life of this planet. We need to acknowledge it, we need to respect it, I'm a Yuchi member of the Muscogee Nation of Oklahoma. We have no word in our language for resources. Those plants, those animals are relatives, and you don't treat relatives like resources. That's, I think, a relationship we can learn from, that it's not simply a matter of domination. It is a matter of synergy. It's a matter of how we get along for the mutual benefit of both. What we need to do is to restore an awareness that we are a part of nature. We are animals. Wilderness is legally designated as undeveloped land, free of permanent structures, mechanized vehicles, or commercial enterprise, where man is deemed only a visitor. Although it was the intent and vision of the Wilderness Act to have everyone Men, women, and children do just that. Visit and enjoy the wilderness for all its inherent value. My uh, father was Howard Zahnizer. In 1957, he was invited to New York State to give a speech about the wilderness. And he says in that speech, uh, we must never forget that the essential character of wilderness is its wildness. There's a wonderful quote by Edward Abbey uh, where he said, it ain't wilderness unless there are critters out there that can kill you and eat you. I still go camping with my kids' scout troops. And my feeling is that I want them to feel overwhelmed. I want them to feel awed. I want them to feel terrified because I want them to experience the fact that nature can trigger those emotions but also help them figure out who they are and what matters to them. From the coasts of Alaska to the Bald River Gorge in Tennessee, 
the Wilderness Act reaches all corners of the diverse American landscape. Wilderness is everywhere, sometimes in remote areas, but often within reach, where it is needed most. I'm from East Palo Alto, so East Palo Alto is very, um, has a really high crime rate. So as a youngster, I was doing all these bad things until I got introduced to um, a rafting trip by one of my teachers in high school. Once I was outdoors, I started being tough. I forgot of who I was pretending to be while I was at school. I could be silly, I could, you know, I could be scared, I could do whatever I wanted. I was just me. The thing to remember is that nature isn't something that we flip through in a picture book and look at. Nature is us. It's who we are, and it's what we need. The wilderness bill was drafted in January or February at our dining room table in 1956, and it wasn't signed into law until September 3, 1964. It went through 66 drafts, and it went through 19 public hearings in Washington, D.C. and throughout the country. Every president since 1964 has signed wilderness legislation. Uh, that shows you the power uh, of this idea. The Wilderness Act has grown over tenfold in the 50 years since it was passed and signed into law. Today there are over 750 wilderness areas and they encompass almost 110 million acres. The Wilderness Act at 50 years. While its legacy is something to celebrate, more importantly, it is a vision worth continuing. With today's ever-increasing speed of life, the creators of the Wilderness Act seem to embrace the duality that the legislation would provide. It was a simple notion, the idea that we all need a place to lose ourselves. And it is in that sacredness that we in turn have the best chance to find ourselves. <laughs>